It's 10 o'clock. Are we live? Okay. Good morning and welcome to the June press conference of uh, myself and the city manager, Bill Cochran. I appreciate you being here today and uh, taking the time to listen to a few things that we want to share with you. Um, usually at the top of, uh, of the questions that we get are questions about an update on the city manager search. So we want to give you a few details about that. Um, I don't want to go into uh, a whole long uh, reading of, uh, of an update, but generally I want to uh, uh, let people know that we are still getting a lot of interest in our position. And I think that's encouraging because that speaks well of the city. It tells people that people are looking at our positions and they want to come here to Topeka and be our city manager. So I think that's important to know. Uh, we have well over 30 applicants so far. Uh, and those applicants uh, far, are far ranging. We have them from one coast to the other coast. But we do have amongst those um, at least 10 applicants, I believe, have a connection with Kansas. Uh, so that was something we were really trying to look and look for and to draw out in our application. So we're, we're pleased with that. Um, we will continue to receive those, I think, is what's the July? July 15th. July 15th is when the close date is. So at that time, then um, the city manager, current interim city manager and staff will be look at those applications and bring them through the body after they've uh, done a lot of uh, verification of information and, and vet them to the needs and job description that we have posted. So I'm encouraged that uh, people are looking at Topeka as a good place to come and, and work as our city manager. That's, that's very, very important, I think, to bring out. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up is, um, and the city manager will help me out on this one, I also want to do a, a request to the community because there are a number of commissions and, and committees and boards that uh, serve the city and people do this on a volunteer basis. They uh, find that interest in their community and, and step forward and, and serve on these committees. But right now we have a couple, three openings that um, we're having a little difficulty in filling, but I wanna make sure that people understand they are welcome to apply and where to go to to apply. Uh, right now we have one opening on the Human Relations Commission, the HRC. Um, and we have two openings on the Civil Service Commission. And sometimes people don't know exactly what their uh, responsibilities or the time commitment would be when they serve uh, on these committees. So um, I want to give a little detail on that city manager to speak specifically to the Civil Service Commission and what its function is for the city. <clears throat> yeah, the Civil Service uh, Commission is extremely important for the city of Topeka. Uh, what that commission does is actually reviews and interviews all police and fire applicants and then make recommendations to the chief as to a uh, course of hirement or non-hirement. And so it's extremely important, uh, this commission. We have two positions opening on that commission right now. And uh, you know if you've been paying attention to the police community uh, committee that's mm -hmm. been meeting uh, over the last year and a half or so, uh, the final recommendation uh, asked for increased involvement from that commission. And it seems to make a lot of sense uh, in that uh, aspect when you look that the commission is involved in the entry level stages of hiring these individuals and interviewing them and make recommendations on hirement, it stands to make sense that that commission have involvement throughout uh, um, the career of those officers and firefighters as they continue on. So uh, it's an extremely important commission and it, uh, time involvement is not over the top, mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, it does review police and fire applicants and uh, meets uh, quite often to discuss uh, protocols and things like that. So uh, keep in mind that also there may be an enhanced role for those positions uh, out, out of the police community mm -hmm. uh, commission. So again, extremely important, very vital to 
the success of the police and fire departments. And so if you are interested in that, I would highly recommend that you visit our website and mm -hmm. contact the mayor's office. Thank you, Bill. Um, and just to reiterate, uh, you know, a lot of folks wonder uh, how they can participate in selecting the men and women who serve the city in those very uh, uh, essential capacities of fire and police service. Uh, and this is one of those ways that you can take an, a very active part in uh, who gets the opportunity to serve the city. Uh, we try to keep that commission membership uh, representative of the uh, population here in Topeka uh, and take every uh, consideration into filling those positions for that uh, purpose. So again, um, I encourage people to consider it. Go to the Topeka website. Uh, you can look it up uh, and see what the qualifications are uh, and some of the time commitment. And if you have any direct questions you'd like to ask about serving on that commission, call my office. I'll be more than glad to visit with you about it. Uh, same goes for the Human Relations Commission just as well. We try to staff that with volunteers that generally represent the cross-section of the city of Topeka population. And it's just as important. Um, they uh, have a role in um, looking at uh, law enforcement as well because they look at uh, some of the reports that we get from our independent police auditor and so th they have an opportunity as well to to participate and that's something that we really tried to emphasize is citizen participation um, I like to refer to it that way rather than input because input doesn't mean that you get your hands dirty participation means that you get involved and you do something and that's what we really need is that participation so I appreciate any consideration people may have for that. Um, one thing that, of course, that we want to talk about is uh, fireworks. Um, with the holiday coming up, uh, there are um, restrictions that we have put in place, and we do them for the safety and consideration of the public, and uh, we want to make sure that people understand them. Uh, we want them to be safe, foremost, but we still want them to understand uh, their responsibilities uh, for the firing of uh, the fireworks here in Topeka. City Manager, you want to review just those very easy to remember restrictions? Yeah, well, as you know, fireworks uh, can be purchased now in the city, but the restrictions are they cannot be shot until July 3rd and July 4th. July 3rd, 11 o'clock is the latest they can be shot off, and on July 4th, it's midnight. We ask that everybody uh, comply with the, that ordinance and if you are in violation of that ordinance you may be ticketed and their fireworks can also be seized so uh, we ask that you respect everybody's uh, um, peace and quiet after those hours and on the days leading up to the third and fourth we ask that you respect the, the ordinance and that um, it is one of those year what time of the year that's exciting for a lot of people but it also is uh, weighs heavy on other folks. So please uh, obey the ordinance and so our local law enforcement and fire, fire department um, won't be busy running down a lot of those type of calls. Thank you. Uh, one thing I want to bring up too and ask the city manager to speak quickly to it and that is that uh, if you've been following the city council meetings you know that we've uh, been given direction to our city finance uh, director to work on the upcoming budget uh, with direction from the council and I think Bill you might have something to offer right now. Yeah July 5th will be the first uh, publish, publishing of the uh, budget so citizens will be able to go and uh, view that online and take a look at the first uh, budget draft that will be presented to the mayor and the governing body. And we encourage you to look at that. Uh, take some time to visit dig through it. Uh, there's a lot of information there, uh, but I think it's important that we make it available to the public so that they can see what the council is working on as a whole uh, for those budget considerations. So I encourage you to visit that, that site. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that tomorrow, no, Thursday, Thursday, June 30th at uh, 10.30, um, 
there will be a press review of uh, the mayor's art initiative. It's something that I wanted to get done when I came into office, and that is I wanted the mayor's office to reflect this community. And uh, one way to do that is with art. Um, and when another way to do that is to make sure everyone has an opportunity to display their works in interpreting what their life is uh, in art, what they think about the city in art. Uh, I have some hanging in the office right now that are uh, pictures, not pictures, but art renderings of the Capitol, and, and they're in different modes and different styles, so I think that's important. And what is important that is that the art that is here is um, from residents of the city of Topeka. So it represents our, our community. And I think it's something that will, uh, I think, open this office uh, to the public as it being representative of the entire community. Uh, our curator is making, making pains to make sure that everybody uh, gets an opportunity. There's a schedule of uh, who will be displaying throughout the year. And I think at tomorrow's press conference, we, maybe we can make that schedule available to the community so people can plan ahead of when they might want to come in and take a look. Now, understanding that the city building is a secure building and city mayor's office is a secure office, but there will be times uh, if you can make arrangements through my office with Jane Murray, uh, my uh, executive assistant, uh, when I will be there and when it will be open so that people can come by and take a quick visit. So I encourage people to uh, look at that uh, uh, press release tomorrow uh, and the, the uh, viewing of the, uh, on Thursday, excuse me. I keep wanting to jump ahead a day. It's Thursday the 30th uh, at 10, 10.30, I believe. Yes. Uh, give people to get a chance to see what the mayor's office looks like. Uh, we've got some pretty impressive art. We have some very talented people in Topeka. And that's why we have the murals that we have around town that we see and encourage those. They, they really are uh, expressive of the community. So I wanted to bring that up. And, and then I think if we've covered all our topics, uh, go ahead and ask if there are any particular questions you'd like to ask of myself and the city manager. There are a couple of Correct. What will be, be the process after that? How long do you anticipate that going? Will the public get to meet the finalists as has happened in the past, I think maybe? And what do you look for maybe a final decision? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of questions. <laughs> and Bill? Yeah, uh, no, that's a good question. That, and we've uh, talked about that process quite often. So what will happen is after the uh, candidates are narrowed down and then there will be interview panels, there will be interviews with the uh, governing body, and then there is a... Um, panel of community individuals that is being put together uh, that is being facilitated out of the mayor's office uh, so on that day they'll have interviews with the governing body they have an interview with the uh, community panel then there will be an open session that evening for citizens to come in and meet the candidates and all that those dates are kind of arbitrary at this time but uh, we're looking, I think, uh, towards the end of August is when those interviews and stuff will take place. If you think about it, you know, July 15th closing, and we got, uh, you know, by that time we could have upwards of 50 applicants that we'd have to narrow down to what we want to interview. Um, so, you know, that time frame is there. The placement of the new city manager is really kind of dependent upon where that individual comes from. Uh, if he or she is local, it may be one of those that transition could be as you know early as the first part of uh, October if it's somebody from out of uh, out of the area uh, a lot of those have uh, pre-employment arrangements where they have to give two months or whatever so we could be looking more like November time frame so the end date is kind of arbitrary but the dates leading up to that are pretty firm mm -hmm. what about the Polk Creek Revised Act that's been a concern that seems like it's kind of died down Well, the streets hopefully will be opened up here relatively soon. Um, uh, we, we, we meet daily with KDOT, and, uh, but 
you know, that partnership was really forged when the Polk Quincy Viaduct really started. And we, w we had developed a tremendous relationship building up. So when this happened, uh, the communication process, we were already in, in, in constant contact. So uh, we feel very confident about that. They uh, are planning on removing the guardrails on uh, the, the parts over to Kansas, Van Buren, and I believe uh, Jackson Street here relatively soon. Hopefully they can get that started next Thursday, I think is what they were hoping. Uh, so when those railings come off and the structure is secured again at that point, we'll be able to open up. Uh, they're gonna start with Kansas, the ones over Kansas first, because that's the primary artery for downtown and city of Topeka. So uh, we're very confident in what we're being told by KDOT. We have a great uh, relationship and uh, that partnership is, you know, is just getting stronger. Uh, the unfortunate thing is because the Polk Quincy Viaduct, the way it is, it's, we can't move it up. There's just no way mm -hmm. uh, with all the other things that have to be done, utilities, relocations, and, and demolition process. So um, we're very confident that, that everything is good to go with uh, KDOT and the city of Topeka. Hey, Jamaica, you mentioned that it's moving, uh, is anybody with a 470, or I guess that's always on the table as an alternate route, but nothing permanent like that. No, the conversations we had with KDOT so far, they're confident in, in the structure. Uh, again, they, that thing is constantly being evaluated. They constantly are looking at what's the best plan, what, what, what can we do uh, to facilitate, you know, the main thing is facilitating traffic flow. We have to maintain that. And so uh, that's really taken into consideration, but they also take in the safety of the structure. Uh, they're telling us that the, the decking and all that's very secure. So um, we have not been told of any plans or anything like that to uh, alternate traffic in any way. Back on fireworks, do you guys have any specific fireworks that are prohibited in the city and then do you have any crews that are going to be looking for those type of things? There are a list of fireworks that are prohibited and those are on the website. Uh, we don't specifically go out and seek certain fireworks or anything like that. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times when it comes to that time of the year, uh, it's kind of a reactive process in which we take because there are so many calls uh, for individuals that are, you know, shooting off fireworks outside of time frames and, and dates. And that's why we ask that people please respect the ordinance and, uh, and everybody's uh, safety and comfortability. In the past, we have had uh, citizens who uh, they go to purchase some of the fireworks and if they see some of those that are illegal and that are being sold, they will call the police department or the city hall and let us know that uh, somebody needs to go have a visit with that vendor. So uh, that's a real practical way to find out what's being sold on the street. And, and the fire department does inspect all the fireworks stands. They have been out already uh, and they will step those inspections up again now that sales have started. And so they, they also look for those things when they do those inspections. Do you use your gift uh, where we're at with White Lakes uh, at this point? How is that going? And is, is there uh, any announcements forthcoming on maybe what's going to happen out there? Are we not there? Or when will we maybe find out something? Well, that's a good question. It's one of those that's on everybody's mind. Yeah. Uh, as you see, White Lakes has come along very well as far as the demo process. Uh, you know, we're still working out the, not us per se, but the things that are still being worked out is, you know, is there, there is a civil suit still pending uh, in court? And so part of that is with the potential purchaser of the property, they cannot acquire uh, the land acquisition until all court proceedings and stuff are tied up or taken care of. And so that's what we're, we're trying to, to work with everybody involved to try to expedite that process. So uh, the sooner the better for the city of Topeka, but that's kind of where we're at on that. Mm -hmm. any, any updates on, uh, this is one that's also kind of on the back burner quite a while, but uh, airport uh, 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 service to Topeka uh, airline, I mean, it's hard, but right now, I guess, United's grounding a bunch of airplanes, like 100. I don't know how that bodes for cities of Topeka's nature, but uh, have you heard anything, or is there any movement afoot about maybe uh, seeking air airline transportation here at some point? Yeah, uh, the Greater Topeka Partnership in the city of Topeka and uh, MTAA, that's one of the things that's constantly on the front burner is trying to get air service and also improve some, in, increase the aerospace industry uh, out at Forbesville. 
and uh, we feel there's some good progress going in some of those areas. We're just not at a point where we can really talk about those publicly, but uh, there are a lot of positive things I think that we're going to see coming in, in the distant near future, uh, and we're excited about some of those things that are going to take place. As a follow-up, I, I just think that the conversations that are being had now are encouraging and uh, are more frequent than they have been in past years, and I think that the uh, intent is to continue to move forward with those and, and not let just uh, air service be the sole focus that we have out there in the development of that property. But maybe have some uh, like aerospace uh, mm -hmm. industry of different kinds as well. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry to keep asking, I'll, this is my last question I think. Uh, what about the, uh, I got to sit in on the uh, police community relations uh, meeting with Bill Friday, enjoyed mm -hmm. that, uh, haven't been to one. I think uh, to check with the city manager with regards to it bringing bringing it forward to the governing body, I don't think it's on the agenda uh, the agenda until later on in July, and once that is put on the agenda, it'll be brought before the governing body for consideration. Um, but uh, what was presented in its final form at the last meeting that the committee had is what will go before the governing body. I, I don't anticipate any changes that will be made uh, between now and then. Are you happy with the work that's been done? Well, I'm very pleased with how uh, Councilwoman Ortiz uh, chaired that committee. She was very uh, methodical, very uh, clear on how she wanted material to be presented. Uh, she made it uh, possible for a real review detail by detail, uh, it, it be a bad argument to say that we rushed through it and didn't cover one area or another. Uh, she documented it even in her final report on what date information was presented. Um, and so she's done an excellent job with that. And I appreciate the time that Car uh, Councilwoman Hiller put into it as well. Uh, I didn't leave the committee uh, once I took mayor's office because I didn't feel that would be appropriate uh, and, and put somebody else in my place there. Uh, but I, I do uh, thank the people who participated and asked the questions that they did and brought subjects to our attention because that made it their work as much as it what is ours. So yeah, I am pleased with the final project. The Calamara project? Uh, the connection to five, what about Helen Park? Just kind of construction, I know there's a standstill at the end of December. That's the, that's the one out by Hummer Park. Yeah, oh, Hummer, yeah, yeah, that's the Calamara okay. project. Yeah. I'm sorry, I thought I said Hart, uh, Helen Park. Uh, yeah, we have been in contact with the developers and they have been doing small projects out there, not at the pace that we'd like to see it done. Um, June 30th was kind of their first timeline of things that they gave us and what they wanted to have accomplished and, and that. So we will be re-engaging them as to see where they're at. Uh, but uh, the other day we did have an inspector out there and there was new flooring that had been delivered. There was a, a small work crew that was out there working. So they are working on the project. We'd like to see it be going faster. Um, but. We, we've been told they've obtained their financing and all that other stuff, so we anticipate work picking up relatively quick. You guys are seeking bigger dollars? No, not, not at this time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything further? If not, well, thank you very much for attending and appreciate your questions. Have a great holiday and safe one as well. And don't shoot fireworks outside of